okay hello you welcome to my channel now in this video we want to solve this um practice question for the je advanced integral type question so we suppose a function f okay real value function from the closed interval 0 comma 1 to uh, that is defined to be e to power x minus the g prime of x plus x where the g of x okay which have, we've differentiated here is the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the power of the absolute value of x minus t dt we have to find the least possible value of f of x okay so let's see what we have well we are to find out first of all to find um though it may not be the first thing but to find the function f of x and then we find the least possible value this is the main question but to find f of x we need to know the derivative of g of x so we've been given g of x we can just go ahead and differentiate this right but I'm not going to do that considering, number one, we have this uh, function here to be an absolute value function. And secondly, if I integrate this, you are going to learn a lot more uh, thing, right, than just differentiating it. Okay, great. So let's see. Well, in fact, let's put down the function g of x. And uh, a similar question like this, where you have an integral from 0 to maybe some number of this, okay, was given in the 2023 JE main um, integral questions. But in fact, it is uh, a good question. In fact, it's very nice to be given as um, an advanced level type question, right? So in fact, this is going to be from 0 to 1 of e to the power of absolute value of x minus t. And you notice that we are differentiating this with respect to t. So t lies from 0 to 1, and x also lies from 0 to 1. That's nice. Okay, so let's see. Now you notice that here we have an absolute value, which means to ensure that um, the result remains positive, right? Okay, so let's see. If x is bigger than t, that means we don't need the absolute value, right? Because this will all, the difference will always be positive. This is x minus t. So if x is bigger than t, the difference will always stay the same. But if x is less than t, then we need to put a negative into x minus t because uh, that's what it will mean to still maintain the positivity all right that is for the, from there for the absolute value uh, stuff so in fact i'm going to break this in, in integral apart we are going to have this to be what you notice is that we can talk about the integral from zero to x and then we talk about an integral from x to one that is i'm going to break this interval into two and you will see why well, I'm going to put it inside here. Uh, maybe let's just do the addition here, right? Now, you notice, as I said earlier, if we have something positive here in this difference, that is, if x is bigger than t, then that tells us that we don't even need the absolute value because the difference will remain positive. So, if t lies in between 0 and x, all right, that is, x is bigger than t, that means um, we can just write this like, like this, e to the power x minus t without any absolute value because uh, that will remain positive given that this is with respect to t. So this is from 0 to t, right? So t lies in between 0 and x. So this will remain positive or in fact non-negative, sorry. This absolute value makes sure we have a non-negative result, right? Not just positive. Okay, so let's look at this one. Well, this means if you're writing this with with respect to t that means x t will lie in between x and 1 with x as a low, lower bound that means t will be bigger than x so if t is bigger than x in fact we are going to write this as e to the power of negative of x minus t right and you know that's from the definition of the absolute value function because it tells us that if we have the absolute value of a certain entry let's say y okay this will be um negative y if y is less than zero or maybe yeah, and it will be y if y is bigger than or equal to 0. So the, it always ensures we have a non-negative result. Anyway, this is for you to take note of. Okay, so we've been successfully um, uh, separated or you know, divided in the integrals into two, all right? Where we have from 0 to x plus from x to 1, okay? So in fact, we haven't... Um, we've just applied the definite integral rule, which tells us that if we have an integral from a to b, then for any point lying in between um, a and b, let's say the function is continuous throughout that interval from a to b, then we can split it as from a to b plus from b to from from a to c plus from c to b. Okay, that's nice. And now let's just continue from here. So we're going to have well just differentiate, integrate this, and then we integrate that, right? So we're going to have e to the power of. Now you notice since we are doing that with respect to t. Okay, and t right here is negative, all right? So we are going to expect a negative uh, 
constant out front. So we have x minus t. We are taking that from 0 to x. So you just uh, integrate that. The exponential function stays the same, except for the derivative of the function here. Right? When we differentiate this, we're going to have negative 1. We divide the exponential function by that negative 1, which gives us a negative right here. Okay, so that's how to integrate that. And then when we're done, we add it with, well, uh, maybe I'm going to take this also. We're going to have... Um, e raised to the power of, you notice if we split this negative to everybody inside, we're going to have negative x and a positive t. So in fact, after differentiating, we're just going to divide by a, a positive one, which means we haven't really divided by anything. So this is negative x plus t. We are taking that from x to 1. Okay, that's nice. So let's substitute the bounds of integral integration and let's see what we have. Well, um, this is the same thing as e to the power of x, okay? And then inside here we can have Let's say, I want to write, okay, I want to write it as, l let, me, let me explain it a little bit, uh, from 0 to x, all right? So what I've just done there is uh, to apply some integral rules where we have the basis are the same and then we subtract or we add the powers, all right? And then we have this to be e to the power of negative x and then uh, maybe let's put this inside, e to the power of t from x to 1, all right? From x to 1. Okay, that's nice. And now let's see. Uh, when we substitute, we're going to have this to be um, e to the power of x, right? This would be from e to the power of negative x uh, minus e to the power of 0 just give us 1. Okay, then we add this with, we substitute that, we're going to have e to the power of negative x. Then we have e to the power 1, then minus e to the power of x. Okay, that's nice, isn't it? And now let's see. We... We have to split this to everything inside here, right? Split it, split and so on. So this will give us a negative 1, right? Um, plus e to the power of x. And then we add it with, uh, this will give us e to the power of, you notice this is 1 minus x. So we just put it there, 1 minus x. And then we subtract 1 from that. Okay, so you notice that when we have negative, when the exponents are negative of each other, the result is just going to give us 1 as a base, together with this negative sign. And the same thing here. Since uh, the basis are, the, since the powers are negative of each other, we just have 1 together with this negative sign here. So all together, we're going to have e to the power of x plus e to the power of 1 minus x, and then negative 2. So you notice that this right here is the g of x, so equality, 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 right? So we can call this g of x. So I'll just say g of x is that. Okay, so we've successfully um, integrated that function. All right, so let's see. We want to get um, f of x, so we need to differentiate the g of x, right? So in fact, the derivative of g of x will give us... So you notice that... And this is an exponential function, so it stays the same when differentiated, right? So we just keep it there. And then this right here um, has a negative exponent, like a negative x. You know, we are doing this with respect to x, no longer t. So we are going to have it to be negative of e to the power of 1 minus x. And then we differentiate the constant, um, we're just going to have 0. So that is, in fact, uh, g prime of x. So, in fact, we are ready to look at the function f of x and also determine the least possible value of f of x. So I'll clean from here to here. Okay, let me let me write down the result. You take note of this g prime of x. Okay, we are going to be making use of it. So I'll be cleaning from here to here, and then we are going to continue solving. Okay, now that we have the, the derivative of g of x, we are going to write our function f of x as uh, e to the power of x, right? Then we subtract g prime of x from that, which is just e to the power of x minus, or oh, that will be plus, right? Let me just show you. Uh, e to the power of 1 minus x, okay? And then we are going to add x to that. So let's just add x to that. So you notice that some things are going to cancel out nicely. e to the power x and e to the power x will become 0 when we subtract the two of them. And then we're going to add e to the power x, uh, 1 minus x, right, uh, with x. Okay, so we have that to be the function f of x. So to find, to determine the least possible value of this function f of x, it's just like asking us the minimum value of f of x, right? And the, the, as the smallest minimum, okay? Because we can have more than one minimum point, which will give us more than one minimum value. So the least of them all, all right? If at all, we will have more than one. So to get that, we need to, you know, differentiate this to get the stationary point or the point where the tangent line will be zero. That is, the, the, the slope of the tangent line will be zero. And then we go ahead to 
this is the second derivative test. So in fact, let's differentiate this function. When we differentiate it, you know, we're gonna set it to be zero. That is how we get the uh, stationary point or the point whose slope, whose uh, slope of tangent is going to be zero. So this will give us, when we differentiate this with respect to x, we're gonna have negative e to the power one minus x because this x here has a negative uh, sign, right? We add it with, when we differentiate x with respect to x, we're just gonna have one. So in fact, this tells us that um, if you take this, that means um, one is the same thing as e to the power of one minus x. So if you subtract a thing from one and then becomes the power of e and you have one as a result, in fact, this power here must be zero. And if the power there is zero, that tells us that x in fact is equal to one. So this tells us that x is one, uh, x equals to one will give us um, zero as the derivative of f. In other words, x equals to one is a stationary point, right? Like for the x value, okay? So let's test. We we are not done because we need to know if this uh, value here will give us, if this point here will give us a maximum value of f or a minimum value. If it gives us the min a minimum value, then that minimum value is the least possible value of f of x. So let's see. We are going to use the second derivative test. So we had a function f of x to be this, and we've differentiated it just once, and we got this. Let's differentiate it one more time. That is the second derivative. You notice this is negative, and this has a negative sign. So in fact, everything will become positive 1 minus x, just as it was before. Then when we differentiate 1, we're just going to have just 0. So this is an exponential function, right? And in fact, and f is a real value function. So this will remain positive for all values of x. So since this remains positive, that tells us that uh, this function, this point here will give us a maximum point or a maximum, uh, sorry, a minimum value of x because the second derivative is greater than zero. So that tells us that if evaluated at one will be, um, the f of x is said to be this, that's gonna be e raised to the power of one minus one plus one. Okay, that means one plus one will be two. So in fact, two right here is the least possible value of this function f of x, given that g of x is the integral. Okay, that's very nice, isn't it? All right, thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel to get similar contents like this, all right? Share this video with your friends, and thanks for watching.